Good morning. Happy Father's Day to all the blessed fathers out there and everyone involved. We just welcome you to House Power Outreach. I'm Pastor Tori Gannon. Pastor Rita and I uh, uh, had lead senior pastors of our church and I'm just excited for this morning's service about Father's Day. Blessed men and mighty men of God, I pray you're being celebrated today and just honored by your families and just all that you do. It's, you, are, you are a blessing to the kingdom of heaven. Uh, we thank you uh, to all of our church and staff and just uh, we direct all of our visitors, everyone. Please go to our website at hopochurch.org and, and look at all the things that we do ministry-wise. They're there. Also, opportunity to give. If God moves on your heart to give. Let God purpose in your heart what you should give. Please pray over your giving as you're preparing to give and where God would want you to uh, be a need meter and, and just allow him to direct and order your steps as, as you prepare and give to God. and. I believe that the fruitfulness of God, that his word is true, that he'll not be mocked, that whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. And, and God is a God of increase. He never would have set it up that way if he did not meant to keep his word. So we are blessed. We are just thankful to God. I do not have any prayer requests, but, but let's just pray over our service. We'll pray over our land. We'll pray over the service, but let's just enter into prayer. Father, I just thank you for this morning. Thank you for the special day, Lord God, and, and the blessed and the men, the people who just get to celebrate their fathers. And we just pray, Father, for those that have gone on to be with the Lord, those that may be without their fathers. I just pray it's just a day of healing and just fruitfulness and joy and the presence of God that they have memories of the great times. I thank you, Lord Jesus, our land as it continues to be healed and restored in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Lord, that, that this is coming. There's going to be a great revival. It's just setting up. The, the land's heating up for the revival of God and the fire of God to take off like never before, Lord. And we just are primed and ready to see the hand of God move. Lord, we thank you for a blessed service. Have your way in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, our message today is A Father Cries, uh, Lives That Shake Nations. In Isaiah chapter 33, verse 5 through 8, the Lord is exalted, for he dwells on high. He has filled Zion with justice and righteousness. And he will be, he will be the stability of your times. A wealth of salvation, wisdom, and knowledge. The fear of the Lord is his treasure. Behold, behold, there brave men cry in the streets. The ambassadors of peace weep bitterly. The highways are desolate. The traveler has ceased. He has broken the covenant. He has despised the cities. He has no regard of men. Man, after I read this verse and saw this, I thought, man, we should just put this on uh, billboards everywhere because that's exactly what our times look like. The streets are desolate. The men are crying in the streets. And, and this is our verse. This is, this is what's happening going on right now. I just love how God's dealing with us right here in this time with his word. And, and so when grown men cry out to God about our streets in our streets, we can have a spirit of expectancy that a great move of God will change generations. And on this Father's Day with the verse of verse 7, where grown men are crying out to God, and we're crying out to God, not, not because of, of what's bad, what's, what's this, what's this. We're crying out to God because we want a move of God in this. Not a move of man, but a move of God. And, and that's the expectation that begins to grow when we cry out to God. Now, it is, it is not about just crying, though, right? Not, a, not about just crying in the streets or whining. And this is not, this is part of this is tearful cry, but it's an outcry is really what, what the message is here about outcry that makes the man of God but crying out the message of Jesus. See, if we're going to cry out, we got to cry out the message of Jesus. It doesn't matter if we cry out the problem. That's okay. You can cry out the problem, but don't make sure you cry out the answer. Then after you're done crying out the answer, make sure you cry out the promises that the answer gave us. So I cry out, God, this is what happened. Now, Jesus, I believe you are the fixer, and here's what you gave me to fix it with. Here's what I believe. Here's what I stir up. The men, the fathers, we're crying out to God. We thank you, God, for what you're doing. Cry out in praise as much as you cry out in problem. 
That's a family man. That's, that's a man of God. That's a, that's a man. That's a father in place. Belief is who we are. And we must be careful of what, uh, of, 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 of what and who we put our belief in. You know, that's belief, my belief is who I am. We must be careful of who we put our belief in. I, it just uh, watching a movie, and they had this story in the movie about this man who, who was, a, he was a healer. He was a bitter man. And this one preacher was preaching against him. And, and got everyone to stop going to his business because he was, you know, just because he just looked like a witch doctor or whatever. Well, the preacher's daughters got sick. He went to this man. No one, they couldn't heal him. Went to this man and asked him to heal him. He goes, why should I do it? You've been preaching against me. And, and the preacher, the man said, well, what will you do for your daughter? He said, God, do anything. He says, you'll do anything? He says, he says, yeah, I'll do anything. He says, I'll give up. He says, you give up everything that you believe in? The man says, he says, yes. The preacher says, yes. And the man said, then I can't help you then. You cannot afford to give up your belief for anything. Don't ever give up Christ. This is, this is where us as men, we stand over a house. My belief is not up for negotiating. I'm walking with Jesus no matter what. And, and that's, that's where the stir is because be, that belief is who we are. And we got to be careful what we put it in and who we put it in. These were brave men of influence that the verse 7 talks about and that brought restoration to their nation by submitting to God their influencer I, I pray that we're out there and we're praying the people of influence will have their heart changed it's not gonna get any better if we just pray at the and talk about the problem but we can pray about the influence and what influences a man to hurt another man? What influences a person to attack another person? What influences hate? What, let's, let's, let's get this thing down by the root, the thing, the, the, the thing that's unseen. We wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and spirit. Let's pull down the stronghold of the influence that would keep hate going. That would keep bitterness going. That would keep victimization going. Let's, let's come against that. When, when men are brave enough to cry out, they are bold enough to believe. I'm brave enough to cry out. I'm bold enough to believe. Toughness is our cry for God's will to be done on earth as it is in heaven. That's toughness. God this earth isn't like heaven. I want it to be like heaven. That's the prayer. It's the Lord's prayer. That's, that's the Matthew 6 right there. That's the prayer. I want it to be done. I want thy will to be done. The heart of a, God, of a godly father takes blood, sweat, and tears, knowing that your sacrifice hasn't, been, uh, hasn't gone without notice. Your work is being rewarded, and your compassion is changing lives. It's the blood, sweat, and tears of a godly man. Know that you're being seen. Know that you're being heard. Or knowing that you are being loved. That the power of God is upon you to move forward. That you're having a Father's Day, not just today, but every day. That's the heart of a godly man. Our hearts grow stronger when they break for what breaks the heart of God. We, will, we stand up for what we believe in, even if it means standing alone. You can't stand with everybody. You can't get on there and get into a place where you're angry just like everybody else is angry because your stuff is different. Your stuff is different because we put everything in the hand of God. It's tough, right? If I say Christians, that's, that's a weak thing. But let's, let's go with it right now. When the Bible says that let vengeance be God. Let, let's, let's go with that. That's a tough place. It takes a father. It takes a godly father to let the vengeance be about Jesus and not about me, not about us. In Proverbs chapter 27 and verse 17, it says, as iron sharpens iron, so one man sharpens another. So we need one another. And not just to all sound alike, but with the understanding that iron is only sharpened with friction. We got to quit running around sounding like everybody else and start making sure we sound like Jesus. Sound like the one that as we sharpen one another and better one another through prayer and through faith and through hope in God, and that, that that's the part that's going to look like God. That's the fathers. That's the brave men in the street crying out, I'm sharpening you because I'm believing in the one who came and saved us and set us free. And who the Son has set free is free indeed. The friction that we sharpen one another, that we grow together. I'm not here just to agree with you. I'm not here to just point at the problem. I want to I want to have a I want to know that there's a promise to fix what is going on in our life. So we must be strong enough to receive God's word, even 
if it differentiates from what is popular. That's the deal. Like, what is if just because it's not popular still doesn't mean God don't want us to obey it. He wants us to obey it. Ephesians 4.23, it says, be angry, but don't sin. Be angry, but don't sin. Most people get condemned because they say, man, I got angry. Yeah, it's, the Bible's telling you, you're going to be angry. Just don't sin with it. Use it in the right direction. Use your anger to cry out to God. Use your anger to worship. Use your anger to speak the word. Use your anger to go get in the word. Use your anger in a way that's healing and restoration. So, but, but angry, but don't sin, which means anger is free. But doing it the right way at the right time for the right reason will take maturity. I believe God is maturing us suddenly. I think it's a quick maturity that's happening in us. He's maturing us suddenly that our anger will be empowered because it will be submitted under God's will. Under the will of God, your anger can be empowered. It can be something that can be used to be a blessing and not a curse. It can be used to be energetic and not have you stagnated in the place that you are. It is, it is a healer. So fathers under authority are more afraid of offending God than they are of offending man. So that's, that's true worship. That's true outcry. That I would rather offend man than I ever would have want to fit, offend God. So if my deal and the way we're going to handle situation, if it's going to offend God, I'm not down with that, right? I'd rather sacrifice my relationship with a man than I ever would with God. My God is, is all that's always been there, always will be there, and I'm not going to separate from him knowing he knows what's best. In 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 11, it says, when I was a child, I spoke as a child. I understood as a child, I thought as a child, but when I became a man, I put away childish things. Where we put the childish thing, I think that's critical. Where did you put your childishness? Where did the childish thing go? Because again, if you don't put it away and you just leave that thing, that old thing around, it, 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 that thing will be revealed and where we put God of responsibilities in times of trouble. So that thing comes up. It's like, well, man, what did I put this childish thing? I was supposed to put childish things away. Am I still complaining about what used to be? I'm still complaining about what didn't go right years ago. Am I still under the same thumb of frustration as I got to stop and go, well, where's the, where is the childish thing? Where was that put? I got to make sure that thing has been put away and not just put on the side to be used later. You put it away. If the child of me comes up in speech or behavior, the maturity of God is being ignored. So it takes that, right, where the maturity of God says be mature, be, be move forward in that. As fathers, we, we, we always talk that to our children, our family members about maturity. It's time to grow up, right? We've got sons trying to be a man, ladies are trying to be a woman. It's time to grow up. It's time to grow up. We're going to put the childish things away. Enduring faith is being blessed with character. Quick fix is getting something and not having the character to keep it. Enduring faith says you're going to be blessed, but it's going to have the character to go with it that's going to stay with you. If I refuse to become, I will always have what has always been missing out on what God wants to do. And this is why fathers under God's walk away from obvious fights to reveal God's obvious power within them. And that's a long sentence, but it, 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 you, you get strengthened by God with, you know, fights that come up in you and you, you know, you're done with that. That's a childish thing. Uh, you're not going to get my reaction because I was proactive in prayer. And as long as you're proactive in prayer and proactive in seeking Jesus, your reactions is going to reveal what you were proactive about. You were not going to be caught up in reacting to things because you were proacting with Jesus well before the day even started. And so that's where you go. You move forward in that. And you move forward in the blessings of God. You move forward in the will of God. So those are parts of God of where he wants us to go. So we look at, we know any fight that's God didn't, that God didn't call us to isn't worth fighting. Sometimes we enter into fights that God didn't call us to do. We enter into battles God didn't call us to do. And then we'll try to say, victor is mine when the battle is the Lord. But that ain't a Lord's battle. So if it's not a Lord's battle as a father, we have to make sure we pull ourselves out of things that God didn't call us to fight in. 
And that's strong right now today because a lot of times people want to pull you into the fight. But you go, no, I'm going to listen to God and God will put me in place. God will position me. So a big man knows how small he is and makes him appreciate how big God is. The measure, the true measure of a man isn't how much he knows, it's how much he does with what he knows. That's your measurement. Do I do anything with what I know? God, I need to hear from you, but you didn't do anything with the last thing I said. So a father, as we teach, and, and is the prophetic prophet, prophet over his house, he's the priest over his house that begins to speak the message of what's to come, and also speaking the message of who to come with, and what's coming over us, that's the priest of your household. Every day, the father presents family. God, here's my family. Have your way. Do your will. Father, here I am. Do your way with me. Have it with me, Lord Jesus, that I may honor you in all that I do in all of my ways, that you may be glorified, that you may be honored. In Exodus chapter 3, verse 1 through 4, now Moses Now Moses kept the flock of Jethro, his father-in-law, the priest of Midian. And he led the flock, he led the flock to the backside of the desert and came to the mountain of God, even to Horeb. And the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a flame of fire out of the midst of a bush, and he looked And behold, the bush burned with fire, and the bush was not consumed. And Moses said, I will now turn aside and see the great sight while the bush is not burnt. And when the Lord saw that he turned aside to see God, to see God called unto him out of the midst of the bush and said, Moses, Moses. And he said, here, here am I. I believe now as as fathers, as we grow in and begin to mature in this way, in this outcry that we have for our streets to be safe. We still got, we got children out there. We're believing God for, for safety and protection over our children. And we're praying for people. We're not, don't, don't let go of your prayer. Don't let go of your faith. Whatever leader is in place, let's pray for that leader that they'll be influenced by the Spirit of God. Because if your prayer comes down and there's no influence of the Holy Spirit, that person's going to turn into that person. But we need to let the whole world know that God is the one that influences. God is the one that has our faith. And where two or more gather together in his name, there he is in the midst. That I will be responsible. When, when God comes to me and say, did you pray? Just almost like someone say, did you vote? Yes, I did. I prayed. I prayed. I, I put in my spiritual rights to lift up leaders. I put in my spiritual rights to be an influencer by the word of God, by the power of God through prayer to lift them up, Lord God, that they will not be able to conceal anything that you don't want concealed, that they will be able to live outwardly and transparent by the very will of God, powered by the Spirit of God. Don't, don't release your vote. Make sure you vote prayer. Vote in prayer. Uh, Moses made a turn. The Bible says that as he was out there doing his job for his father-in-law, he turned aside to see the great sight. I believe that we're being slowed down from what we used to think was important, heading to work, heading back home, heading to work, heading back home. And now we're starting to turn aside to see God. We're starting to enter into prayer closets, enter into praise closets, enter into rooms uh, to see the very move of God, the very presence of God that is taking place. Therefore, that when I go back out to lead in any area of life, I'm going to be a leader that has experienced the presence of God. I'm going to be a leader that has experienced the fire of God in such a way That it is going to burn through everything that does not line up with God's word that's in my life. That's the fire. That's what I'm looking upon. That's what I'm turning to. I'm turning toward God. Malachi 4, 6, it says, turn the hearts of the fathers back to the children. Turn it back to them. Turn it where they love. And just cry out into the streets. I, I, I challenge you to take verse 7 in our initial, in our initial reading of 30, Isaiah 33 and cry in the streets. Just take it out there. Stand in front of your house. Stand in the streets and just read the verse. Whatever you got to do. 
become brave about your streets covered in the, in the verses of God and the word of God and the will of God as he begins to grow us up in this place and say, brave men read the Bible, brave men pray, brave men worship, brave men have an outcry for the revival of God and the restoration of God to take hold of their streets. So we do it in the streets so the streets will know it's not up to man. This is not man doing what's right in their own eyes. This is man submitting to the very will and spirit of God in a way that this land belongs to Jesus and the power of God. It is that. He turned it out. Now, he looked at that, and Moses made a turn toward the presence of God. And regardless of what he was doing, the presence of God meant more to him than anything else. The amount of time we spend doing work will never measure up to those moments that we have in the presence of God. Those times, those moments with God will outlive those minutes and hours you spent working or doing something else. When God calls us fathers to a stop and calls us to a stopping place and calls us to a place to say, I need to talk to you. I need to hear from you. Stop there. That is your burning bush experience. That is God about to minister to you in such a way that when you take off from that ground, when you take your shoes off, get on that holy ground and go forward from that point on, you are going to walk in a fire and an authority like never before. I believe it's instructions from God by fathers as we lead. We're leading in the head of the households as we lead forward and go out out with God that it's because we've sat at the feet of a move of God of a miracle of God and he said I'm directing your steps in such a way that you're going to change the streets 